My name is Zane Accord. For the past five years, I've immersed myself in the Irish music scene in North Texas. In that time, I've learned to play and love the music. But I don't know how it got its start in North Texas. So this is my journey into Irish music. To start off my journey, I thought I'd talk to a good friend of mine, a man by the name of Rick Holt. What is it about the North Texas area that you think draws a lot of people to the Irish music in here? Well, when I came on board, the, the Irish music community was pretty well established. There were quite a few players. Uh, the North Texas Irish Festival had been going for several years already, decades even. That, that's a big draw. That's what drew me in the Irish Festival. And uh, then as I started getting interested in playing, I was seeking out sessions, opportunities to play, and from there I met other musicians and found out about the start of the O'Flaherty Irish Music Retreat, uh, the beginning of that, so I was a student of that the first year. And uh, there are a lot of things with the retreat and with the Irish Festival in particular that draw people to this, to this area. After talking with Rick, I thought I'd talk to another friend of mine, Miss Janice Dean. So can you elaborate really quickly on those, that school and the, uh, the, re the youth camp and the retreat? Yeah, so um, about 14 or 15 years ago, uh, Ken Fleming came up with the idea of having a camp of some sort. And I think our first camp we held at a very small retreat in Richardson. Um, we probably had about 50 people, students, come and we taught beginning instruments. Over the years it has grown so that now we have uh, probably 30 or 40 instructors come in and close to 230 students at the retreat, uh, which we have every year at Camp Hubble Cell down in Midlothian. Once I finished talking with Janice, I headed to my friend, Miss Claire Kaysen. So, um... Who do you think are some people who are really important in the establishment of Irish music in this area? This is, uh, unfortunately, since I wasn't involved at that time, I'm such a newcomer to it, I, um, I didn't witness any of this, but I know that Ken Fleming was instrumental in kind of the leadership of a lot of the early events, like the, um, the first I did, didn't call it that at the time, but what became the North Texas Irish Festival, the first one of those was in 1983 at, a, at the popular pub at the time. And he also started the uh, Southwest Celtic Music Association and the O'Flaherty Retreat. And the uh, O'Flaherty Irish Music Youth Camp was his brainchild also, although he didn't actually run that. So we're really thankful to him for everything that he's done to get the music started in this area that we uh, have all benefited from. And then Gordon uh, did a lot also with getting the youth camp going and setting a structure for that that we've continued to use to this day and I'm really thankful for his work as my co-director there. Clara mentioned Gordon McLeod and Ken Fleming, so I headed to the Trinity Hall Pub in Dallas to talk to the two of them before a performance. about our area that you think makes it where we have so many fantastic players? Oh, I think it, it really has to do with, uh, a lot to do with Ken Fleming <laughs> and people like him who got started and organized things because we don't have a, a big Irish community here. So it was, it's really from the musicians and I think musicians like it because it's, uh, as I was saying, you know, there's a social aspect to the music yeah. and you kind of uh, can get together and play without having to be maybe the best musician in the, in the genre because there's other people supporting you while you're playing you know, and then you get better and better as you, as you play more. So, but I think a lot of it has to do with the Times organization, the Southwest Celtic Music Association, the Irish Festival here, and all those things go back to a, a group of people that, you know, Ken was one of the main ones in that group, Ken and his wife Peggy, and yeah. John Delaney who plays in the band Beyond the Pale with me, and other people like that.
So some of the other people I have talked to have credited you as one of the big people who, have, who has helped establish a lot of the Irish music in this area. Can you just talk a little on what you've done? Uh, I, wish, I wish others would talk. <laughs> um, well, I had the good fortune to be in a band called Tinker's Dam back in the early 80s. Um, and through that, I was able to make lots of connections with other people that played music or loved Irish music. So we were in a place at that time where we wanted to start something to kind of bring those players together. So we had the North Texas Irish Festival. We started that. Uh, th we didn't realize it would be the success. It was called the tech First Texas Cayley is what we called it, the very first one. Out of that, we ended up with money we didn't expect to have. So we formed the Southwest Celtic Music Association. Um, the founders were myself, my wife, Peggy Fleming, or Peggy Davis back then, and also uh, Peggy Turner and Jim Brunke, who are members of a, a group over in Fort Worth. Um, we started the initial Southwest Celtic Music Association, started doing concerts with various groups that were touring. Um, from that, I you know, obviously directed the festival for the first part, first five or six years of the festival. Um, and then I decided to start my family and I moved on to that, but I still kept active in Irish music. Decided to get involved with the educational side. We formed Times about 14 years ago. Um, and then we started the retreats and the youth camps and everything else. So there you have it. Like the genre itself, Irish music in North Texas started with humble beginnings and has continued to grow ever since. What is your favorite thing about playing Irish music? The people. <laughs> 